Welcome back to the Integrateness Podcast with Jason and Jolene. I am Jason. I am Jolene. And today we're talking about the little things. No, not that Denzel Washington movie, which is really, really good. Have you seen that, Jolene? No, oh it's gosh. a movie I have not Why seen. Why do you need to watch? <laughs> we need to do a movie episode, when, right? right? When, like, when the day extends past 24 hours, <laughs> then you shall. I might make time to turn my TV on. That's always my nightly wind down. Is mm. to watch something before bed. All right. Um, anyways, but the little things, and those little things are, I think, the things that make life most important. Well, when we look at it from a anatomical perspective or physics perspective, it is truly the little things that make up everything. It is, isn't it? Yes, Adam, he's lovely. <laughs> That was good, wasn't it? That was very good. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It's true, though. But it's true. We are all made of very tiny atoms. Yeah. And if not for those tiny atoms, none of us would be here. Yeah. Nothing would be here. This right? table, this microphone, the device you're listening to this on. Fuck, we're so smart. It's just unfolding as we talk. Exactly I love right. it. But that, it is all the little things that make up the big one. It's yeah. rarely the big event at the end. It's all the little things that lead up to it. We often talk about the journey, not the destination, right? Yes. So yes, all of these little things make up us, right? And, you know, we would not be who we are without all these tiny life experiences or the people in our lives or the parts on our body, right? Like yep. I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have five fingers and five toe, 10 fingers and 10 toes. <laughs> I was going to say like you lost digits? What the hell? <laughs> oh, whatever though, right? So yeah, thinking about all of this. Okay. So for you, what inspired a little bit of this topic here today? Oh, it was, it was, uh, uh, Mark Manson uh, video. Of course, he's the guy that wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. If you haven't read it, read it or get the audio book and listen to it. Yes. And he's got a great uh, weekly podcast yes. as well. And he put out a video on his YouTube channel that was an excerpt from one of his book. I think the, the Un How to Unfuck Your Life book or something like that. Mm -hmm. And basically, it touched on something we talked about in Memento More is that uh, you're going to die because you've had the privilege of being alive. Which yeah. I, and I think that's a wonderful way to put things in perspective. Um, so, you know, when people bitch about they're having a bad day or life's been unfair. Or of their birthday, of getting older. Or getting yeah. older. It's like, yeah, but you're fucking alive, man. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the important thing that we lose sight of. And so appreciate that coffee that you get in the morning or getting to sit down for an hour and read a book or smoke a cigar and listen to your favorite playlist or the hour you got to go for lunch with that friend you don't see very much or whatever. Those are the important things, not the stuff that we're taught to be important being extremely wealthy owning that big ass boat um the huge uh, the huge house that everyone seems to be striving for or that vacation to new orleans with 15 of your friends and none of you can figure out how to make breakfast in the morning so you hire a fucking cook to cook for you like tell that's, us how you feel <laughs> right that's not the important things in life it's the smaller little things there's a great line in a movie called just married where the couple go on their honeymoon and it's a complete shit show um and so the guy goes back and he's complaining to Is his dad. Is that with Ashton Kutcher? Yes. I've seen it. Bra yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so you've seen that. The bit at the end where he's talking to his dad about how he had a shitty honeymoon and the marriage isn't going to work. And the dad says, like, you know, you see those pictures in like a photo album? That's not the important stuff. It's all the stuff that goes on in between those pictures that gets you from one to the other. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I've seen that That's movie. a good movie. Yeah, and the car falls apart or something Yeah, and it's like a little, that. little tiny. Yeah, the first little... time you ever really saw a smart car yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. So it's it, 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 I chuckled to myself when you talked about enjoy the coffee, right? Because Kevin and I were just away uh, for a couple of days um, a while ago now since you listened to this. But I swear that hotels have a uh, contract with, like, the Keurig companies or whatever mm -hmm. for, like, shit recycled coffee or something it's like awful. it's actually hotel brew is what they should name it but yep. they put like colombian you know whatever on there it's not it's, it's hotel crap. brew and it fucking tastes awful so the first hotel we were at we both looked at each other because he knows that i and i'm not a, a picky coffee drinker okay mm -hmm. i have my own coffee i make it in my bodum yep. and i just i, I enjoy a, a tasty coffee so i will buy like some local beans from different coffee companies and stuff i know jess has a brewing. yeah i know jess yep. has a coffee the, um, but I bought subscription. her, yes. Yeah, yep. that's so cool. So I appreciate that. I'm not a Starbucks person. I don't spend money on coffees, but I enjoy a good tasting coffee. 
I <laughs> often complain about how awful the hotel coffee is, and I'm not picky. So it's just you, terrible coffee. Yeah, we just stayed in a hotel too, and it was yeah, the coffee sucked. yeah, it does. And I think they do that so you buy at the restaurant downstairs or whatever. Yeah. So Kevin and I were both like, oh, this one's not too bad. So the first one, we were like. That's not too bad. <laughs> we enjoyed the little piece of like, it wasn't ass. It didn't yeah. taste like ass coffee. It was like armpit coffee. It wasn't yeah. quite as bad, right? And then the next one was not that good. But the restaurant coffees that have like bottomless mm-hmm. pour, like at Ricky's and things like that. Oh my God. They charge them like $4 a, a coffee now in those little restaurants. They, they have to, to staff everything, I guess. But it tastes so bad. So we finally, when we were at Harrison there, we popped into this one cafe. And I was like, you know, initially he's like, well, let's just get a good one for the road. I'm like, no, I don't need one. Again, my receiving issue. Like, I don't need one. And then I was like, it was the best fucking part of the trip. (laughs) He's like, you're going to say that this coffee this morning was the best part of the trip. And I was like, it is so good. And that's all I could say. The whole cup of coffee. I just kept saying this coffee is so good. <laughs> so sometimes you have to go through the shit, yep. shit coffee to enjoy the really good one. And that is often about life too. Like it is. we, you know, I think about the tiny little things that like Kevin and I will do for each other that I so appreciate that before I might not have appreciated because I didn't experience the lack of them. But then when I experienced the lack of it for so long, it's the tiny little things that matter. It is. Right? It is. So it also helps change our perspective and what becomes noticeable to us. Right? We will do that with the weather, right? If all of a sudden we need a rainfall because we're in fire season or whatever, I will tell you, people won't be bitching about that rainfall they love that rain. when we need it, right? Yeah. But if we're getting too much of it in the spring after a long winter, people are complaining, right? It's like it's, when you, you, you don't, it's like when you get a whole bunch of snow all winter, but there's no snow at Christmas. Yeah. And you complain. But if, or the opposite. Yeah. You have no snow, oh my God, and it's only it snows Christmas Eve. That is like the best snowfall on the planet. Yeah. And right? it's also like, it's funny you're talking about Christmas there because in my head I was like, yeah, when you get this abundance of gifts at Christmas, like, why is there sometimes this like lack of appreciation for some more or less than others? And it's like, wait a sec, they're all fucking gifts. Like, yeah. you could have easily had none of them. How right? How do you feel about that? Life <laughs> right? is like that. Yeah. Every moment is a gift. It is. You could have had none of this. Yeah, you could think of all the things that had to happen for you to even be born. Right. Not, yeah. But don't think you but, really want to. I don't know why they don't want to. But say your parents hadn't met, yeah. or they broke up before. Totally. Like you would not be here. Yeah. You would not be. You would not exist. Like totally. I, a buddy of mine, um, he had his wife had a miscarriage, and then they had another baby, and he's like. Not a day goes by where I don't think about the baby we didn't get. But if we got that baby, we wouldn't have this one. That, He says that just fucks with his head. Totally. I talk about that a lot too because I had a miscarriage right before my twins. Oh, And I always kind of joke that like that baby was like, oh, hell no. I'm coming. I'm coming with a friend. Hold hold up, right? Hold my beer. (laughs) (laughs) We got to wait a little bit. But that right there because I would have never had a third child if I had a a one for one, right? Yeah. It's it's all that stuff, right? That just messes with your head. So just appreciate the simple part that you're actually here right now. And like we talked about in the Memento Mori episode, because you can go at any time. You're right. Each moment's a gift. Each day that you wake up in the morning, like don't take that for granted. Yeah. Right? Don't plan, oh, a year from now I'm going to do this, if you can just do it right now. And that's funny because yesterday when you hard launched our website, I was like, oh, you just kind of went for it, hey? (laughs) And you were like, that's what I do. And I was like, okay, I wasn't against it. I was not opposed to it. But I was like, he's not fucking around here, guys. No, that's why I don't. And I've got, I told you in the text, I sometimes get in trouble for it. Yeah. But it's because why fucking wait? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You might not ever get that chance. Yeah. And it's true. And I, I, I definitely, um, it's funny because I feel a block for myself in some of those places mm-hmm. and it's a block to receiving. We talked about it last week, but I know exactly where some of those blocks of the leap are for me. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like leap season. If we go back and think about what Brittany was telling us in the astrological mm-hmm. stuff, when we're recording this right now, we've just kind of entered Aries season. Mercury is in the microwave. The Gatorade <laughs> is in the microwave. Yeah. Mercury's retrograde spinning backwards. We are both very Mercury dominant in yep. our connection here. Yep. Um, so that stuff starts to go all 
all squirrely and weird and in a strange sense we're in the middle of eclipse season and it's like aries time so it's like boom it's go time and this was a big time in your chart yep. for you to be like hitting the doing stuff hitting the road with the rubber on fire what do you i love it put the pedal to the metal and go there are you oh, <laughs> fuck the rubber <laughs> So the little things, maybe do a little collection of what little things you've started to appreciate in your life that maybe you would have just totally oversought before, yeah. right? Yeah, geez. Like, I mean, like building the Avengers Lego tower. Yeah. That's a little thing. It's, in the grand scheme of things, people would be like, that's not that important. But it, to me, it was like one of the most fun things I've done so far this year, right? The uh, trip to, that we family did to Kelowna, we went to the kangaroo farm. That was an amazing morning. Okay, now take that and break that down. So yep. I would I would actually say that that trip was a big thing. The trip itself was a big thing. Yeah. The components within it made the trip. What were some of the little things? And that would be like the swimming in the pool with Griffin. Okay. Break that down even more. Uh, the simple act of like that first bit where, because we hadn't, none of us had swam since summer, right? Yeah. So just, you know, when you first just jump in, the sensation of hitting the water, and it's a bit cold. Yeah. But you can feel it just wash over you and you kind of go under and then you pop up. Like yeah. that's just awesome. That. See how we broke that down, guys? So do that. Find the big item and break it down even more and break it down even more. And I wouldn't be surprised if in somewhere it was literally the glimmer of childhood in Griffin's eyes yeah. finally. Because he doesn't play the same way he used to play. No, he's very and different I, now. Yeah. yeah. I bet you got to see Jess play him play and you play in a slightly different way. And sometimes it's just the look mm -hmm. that that person can have that you just instantly go, oh. oh. Yeah, that's that's that moment, right? That is the little moment right there. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, like, we went at the kangaroo farm. Like they have more than just kangaroos, obviously. Uh, they had parrots. And you're actually allowed to hold the parrot yeah. and pet it. And I remember holding the parrot, which I've never held a parrot before. And because it wants pets, it just it snuggles right in. And just seeing that parrot like snuggle right oh. in to accept except receive the pet. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty wild. Wow. Yeah, that was a great moment. So it's just little, but those are little things. Like, but people focus on the big, oh, we went and did this trip and did all yes, this stuff. Yes, no, right? it's the little things in there. It's, yeah. the, it's the smaller things. It's the glimmers of stuff. That's what I really encourage people to break down. Like, yes, you had that big one, but what was it that made up that experience, right? Yeah. What were the little things, right? So I can think of like so many different little things, you know, even just last yeah. night, like my daughter needing to sleep in my bed and how annoying that is and how I get kicked in the ribs and like, you know, <laughs> Know, all of the things but just this morning she was just like amongst this giant duvet with these pillows all around her just zonked and I took a picture and I sent it actually to Kevin and I said when I am reincarnated at some point I am coming back as this kid mm -hmm. and she was just so content and so safe and so cozied in there that moment of looking at her was everything yep. right like there's just it was so wholesome, right? I get lots of moments like that. You know, I think about the beginning of Marshall's last hockey season here. And he, I was still allowed to tie his laces. He requested me to tie his laces. That's a big deal, guys. It is. It, <laughs> it, it is, is, right? Because yeah. now his team says no parents in the dressing room, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's taken away very quickly, right? But he made a bracelet for me out of black hockey tape oh, and nice. tied it around my wrist. He said, here, mom. And he tied it around my wrist and I left it there the entire season. I just actually rolled it off uh, after his last game because wow. I was like, oh, that was a seasonal bracelet. But I refused to take it off. And it was a piece of hockey tape, guys. Super durable, I must say. Yeah, they last forever. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, it was that little thing. It's just the little things, right? Yep. I, I leave notes for my kids in their lunches. Um, they notice these little things. And at one of them, my daughter actually wrote back... Love you too, mom, and oh, have a good awesome. day. And I was like, oh, that's it was fantastic. receipt. Like, yeah. Or when my kids eat their whole lunch, I'm like, woo, I actually cheer. I'm like, you guys did awesome. Yeah. Like, I feel like I get a thumbs up because they ate all the food, right? Sam Griffin now wants me to make him scrambled eggs and toast in the morning. Right? That is, a, you're like, I'll do it, man. Right, you sure. need me? Yeah. You need me? You need me? Yeah. Do something for you? That's awesome. Yeah, and it is. It's the tiny little things, you know? Like, I remember uh, Kevin was saying he placed his grocery order and they keep screwing up on this one thing he's ordering and they give him like a totally different thing that's for a different meal 
And he's like, ah, they keep screwing this up. So I went on Amazon and I just like shipped a six pack of it to his house. Nice. And he randomly got it like five days later and was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you remembered? Like it's, we're not used to being heard or listened to. And when someone actually sees that and addresses it, it's like a, it's a whole different ball yep. game, right? And, it's not and it was something gesture. so simple. It's not a broad gesture. It's not this romantic trip to Disneyland or yeah. Hawaii. It's the little thing. It's the little thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And as a journalist, it's funny because we're taught, and any investigator, you're taught to look for the little things, mm. right? Not the big things. It's the little clues, the little bits and pieces that lead to the bigger clue that leads to this, that breaks the case or the story wide open or whatever. It's the devil is in the details. Yeah. Right? But we don't think about that in, in life in general. Yeah, you know, I don't know though, Jason, because I actually think you do. So when you walk in, like in all your paranormal work and stuff, mm -hmm. you walk in, you see a bigger picture, but you start deducting. Well, yeah, that's, it. it's that's the, process the investigative. Of it's the process of deduction. And I do it down, right? Yeah, I yeah. do the same thing in my therapy Counselors, office. Same thing. Somebody comes in with this big ass issue, and I'm like, mm, "Where's that coming from? Yeah. It's not the issue. It's not about the issue." Yeah. yeah. So then we're always kind of deducting down. So, like I said, you know, go and find just even today. What was today, or what was this weekend, or what did Easter look like? What were the highlights? Right now, break those down. What was it that made that the highlight? Light. yeah break that down right spring break i even asked my kids you know like we didn't do anything big and extravagant over spring break but it was like hey what did you guys do before they went back to school i was like what did you guys do over spring break that you would share with your class yeah. if you guys are going around the circle right yeah yeah and then kind of reminding them of the little things that seemed like nothings that were somethings those days and they're the things i think when we look back at favorite memories it's usually smaller yeah. Everyday stuff than these big trips. Like we did lots of family trips. Well, not lots, but like once a year we'd always go somewhere big. But I still, the stuff I remember most is like sitting on the beach with my dad, looking up at the sky out at the lake and watching Skylab fall. Yeah. I mean, the Skylab falling is an event, but that's just a very simple little thing. Amongst that bigger Amongst trip. Amongst a bigger trip. Yeah. Right? Yep. I noticed, um, like with Kevin, he's he's big at that. He pays attention to the little things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would, he'll say like, I really enjoyed that or I really liked this. And it is. It's a simple thing of like, I liked when we were just sitting next to each other watching such and such, you yep. know? And it's just, um, you know, when we start living in that kind of way, when we can model that to our kids, it reminds us that we're good enough as is. Mm -hmm. We don't need the fireworks and the fancy this and the whatever the extras are. Yeah. It's good enough the way it is. And that's not a settling good enough. No. That is a realistic, grounded approach to this is satisfying. Yeah. This is what life is supposed to be. Yeah. Right? And part of it, being able to see those things, the stuff we've talked about like through meditation and yoga is being mindful and in that moment. Mm -hmm. So not having your head off somewhere else all present. the time. You'd be present. The present is a present. Yeah. There you go. That's good. Dash 30 dash. Nothing more really needs to be said. <laughs> ba right? But it's true. Like that's, and that's sort of, when we talked about meditation, how to get more, not only is it good for resting and recharging the batteries, but it helps you live more in that moment. Yeah, and I think we are in such a highly stimulated and um, bedazzled world right now that it's harder to get to those places of simplicity. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It takes more effort and more work. But if you're willing to put that time and energy in, you will get a lot more out of life, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Well, then there you go. That is our episode on the little things. Yeah, and we're just <laughs> going to keep it little and simple and... You're just going to let that sit. That's right. Until and, next and, week. And marinate. And marinate. I'm going to let that one marinate. I always love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a problem with the Canadian, majestic Canadian goose, you've got a problem with me. And I suggest you sit there and let that one marinate. <laughs> <laughs> we miss Letter Kenny <laughs> this season. No, they're done, eh? Yeah. That show's finished. Oh, that's too bad. That's 11 too bad. seasons or something like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. And see, this is the other thing is sometimes you just got to let them be. Like, yeah. you can't keep dragging it on Grey's Anatomy, you know? On what, season 24 or something? I don't know. Are they still like running? That? It's, it's on. That's yeah, the one show I used to sit down and watch until a couple yeah. years ago. There's like Law and Order. It's like Ooh, season wow. 30. It's, it's ridiculous. Wow. It's like The Simpsons. Anyways, yeah. that's a whole other topic of right? conversation. It's all the little ones that make up the big one. It is. We'll be back next week with your next favorite episode. Until then, I'm Jason. I'm Jolene. Talk to you soon. <laughs>